if it's hello hello can people online hear me hello yes okay people can hear you yes yes now i can't get them i put one in yeah it's not stable Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just from unmute, I think this one. Unmute, right? Yeah. Okay. So, everyone heard me? Okay. So I will just explain why uh, this shape that we have here, it is something like this. So why this is taking this this shape? It's trying to minimize something, and what is that? Exactly. So basically, it tries to minimize the surface area. So let's calculate that. This is my coordinate. And let's take a very small strip here. This one. So this distance is y. And this is, let's say, this arc length, ds. So what is the area of the small strip? The area. So let's say this is uh, something. This is let's say zero. This is say x naught. So integral zero to x naught of this small area of the small strip. This is what two pi y. What is two pi y? Two pi y is a ring. The parameter, the the perimeter of the ring. Multiplied by this small arc length, that is ds. Is it clear? Okay. So now, what is ds? What is ds? Dx squared plus dy squared in this coordinate system. So ds is like a small, this small. This is this is ds, right? It is. So this is the surface area that it tries to minimize. Okay. Now let's go back to this one. There is a chain hanging. So here also it tries to minimize something. What is that? Potential energy. So here, what what is the potential energy? Let's say okay. So again, this is the let's the height y. So, what is the potential energy of a very small mass dm? G, y, dm. Correct. Uh, again, zero to x not integral. Zero to x not. Uh, minus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, ultimately, it will not matter because there is only this term. And what is dm? Dm is let's say the uh, Mass per unit length is lambda, then it's like lambda by ds. What is ds? Ds is this very small arc length. Again, y. Again, I write this ds in terms of x and y. That is again root over dx squared plus dy squared. So you see, in this context, it is trying to minimize the potential energy which has this form. And here it tries to minimize the surface area, which is of this form. They have identical forms. They have identical things. They are trying to minimize with a very different situation. There is a slight difference between these two situations. One is here I have an additional constraint. That is the length of the chain is fixed. That is zero to x naught ds is l. L is the length of the chain. That is the additional constraint I have. Apart from that, both have the same. Quantity that they try to minimize. So this is uh, those of you who have studied Euler-Lagrange equations, the actions. This is the effective action for the system. 
So they both have the same action. That is, they are trying to minimize. So the that's why the equation is that they looks the same. They have the same equation apart from that constant, and that constant will manifest into some number at a, as a constant factor in the equation. Apart from that, then they both have the cos hyperbolic form. So this is basically cos hyperbolic. So you see the same uh, behavior. In fact, if you just look at this part, this is exactly the same with platinum. Apart from a constant shift, that is com that's coming from the uh, constraint. So that's it basically. No. Cool. Yeah. So what is the constraint because of the it has that So maybe like on its part, the first stage will be like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Wants to try this out. You have a question. Film? I mean, here? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this will change because then there will be an addition term. Then you have to finally you have to include, include that term. Then write down the Euler-Lagrange equation and solve to get the expression. Yeah, this, this is no. This is the area. Yeah, full area. Uh, no, no, no. This part is not there. Okay, if there is an inner disk, then you have to include the area of the inner disk. Yeah, we can't get the inner disk plane to R. Yeah, you can see the difference. Yeah. You see that? There's a sharp thing at that. Yeah. Thing. You can easily see the difference. Yeah, you see it. It's coming down straight like a part of a cone. Yeah. We got that. It's like, a, what do you call that? The cone with its head on top. Plus K plus top. Plus top. Right? Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, how do you spread it again? Yes. Uh, so they can hear you when only when you speak. Other audio is not supposed to work for them because the mic is very low. Even with the microphone? Yeah, that is not connected to the
Yeah, can you speak something? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, just uh, yeah, just speak Hello. something. Hello. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. you can continue. I put your money like I put let's say ten ml of money.
ভালো ভালো তো বডি স্প্রে বন্ধ করতে আসছে কি রোজ মাস আমার রোজ নেই কোথা দিয়ে হয় হ্যালো আর এবার দিয়ে হ্যালো হ্যালো চেক মাঝে মাঝে তো ফোন বন্ধ করে পড়ে মাঝে মাঝে তো বন্ধ করে পড়ে হ্যালো হ্যালো Hello. Just tap the tap tap the. Ah, this is somebody talking. Yeah, can you speak some? Hello. I'm done now. No, that they some of them are asking that units don't matter what they. Yeah, intervals don't matter. You can take. Intervals matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do as fast as you can, like once in ten seconds or once in fifteen seconds. Whatever you can do, do it. And it doesn't have to be uniform. So if you miss one reading, don't panic. Take it at the next step. But start your stopwatch. Once you make it axisymmetric, start your stopwatch. Anyway, let me do the solution. This question explains. Okay. 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 Okay.
it's a 3.3 extension starting for the online people here we have one acrylic glass and a polar graph so what i am going to do is i am going to pour 2.5 ml of this solution at the center when i am done pouring the friends will be taking the reading
Can you speak something? Hello, is online people can hear us? That is for online people. Yeah, or if you want hand mic, I can give the hand mic also. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. <laughs> And uh, 
Thirdly, we have the continuity equation here. Remember, divergence of the velocity field at every point. So, if you write down the velocity, if you write down the relation and do certain manipulations, you arrive at this unsteady equation. So, uh, so h here is the thickness of the film. That is a function of r and time. And uh, r here is the radius, and z is the transverse direction. So why I'm mentioning all of this is because you can you see here now we have a we are stuck with the PDE after using the continuity equation. Now how to solve it? So remember that Rama talked about similarity solutions uh, in the in the last lecture. So uh, in this case, uh, the similarity variable I am skipping the details. So the similarity variable one can take it to be an R upon e to the power of y, and if you substitute this variable in this relation. You will be able to solve and get this final result. So yeah, <coughs> so yeah, that's it. So that's the that's how you get this d to the power one by x. And you can see like what happens in gravity in physics. Right. So so basically, just like in any physics problem, think of the physical parameters we have. So I have q, which is the volume of the drop. I have gravity g, and I have the kinematic viscosity nu. So try to construct a length scale from all these parameters, and you will end up with something like that. So you can see that if your if the gravity is very high, then it is like because potential energy is then you can do more stuff. Like how it scales with the number. Right, right. So you can see that the radius. So the radius here actually, if you see this. Power one by eight makes everything pathological in that sense. So you can have a very high gravity or Q or very low Nu, but the moment you operate this power one by eight, everything falls down to very small. So yeah. Uh, uh, so any questions? When you do it, you know the best thing is to increase the volume. Yeah. Want yes. So like you guys did a five level. That is what we try to. Yes. Yeah. 
disturbance only. Now the young bird was in my pocket. Show them this is the normal tap water. Yeah, so this is, uh, we are pumping in uh, normal water first. This is the lighter one. Next we'll pump in salt water. What we want to do with normal water and salt water is something that we'll see. That we want to create two different layers. And if we tilt one of the layers down, the salt water being heavier will try to rush down and push the normal water up. That will create a velocity difference across the layer of salt and normal water, which we are hoping would cause the instability. No, relative is different. So as you see, relative has done already the unstable condition, which is uh, heavy on top. Oh, light on bottom. This will be heavy on top. Yeah. Sorry, heavy on bottom and light on top. Yeah. We will just want to create a velocity gradient. Nothing else. Of course, the density gradient that is here between salt and the regular water helps in the instability. Ideally, if we were very skilled, we could have created velocity gradient even with normal water, but we are not that skilled.
No questions. Especially as we tilt it after this, because that will introduce some C. Water is leaking. Yeah, it's not completely clean. It's much better than this. So now we want to keep, keep the lighter on top and heavier on bottom without introducing the waves that we want to see. Later we'll do the same thing. Keep an eye on it because if it goes wrong, still it will form some waves before mixing. <laughs> Almost nice. Wait, 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 wait. My finger is here. Um, I, I didn't remove my finger, you can place it down. Okay. So this is the situation we have. So it's not done yet. Now we want to see the waves okay. we are talking about. Which which side? Which side will you do? That side up or this side? So okay. Uh, is 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 there, is there anyone for whom it's not clear what we are trying to do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because now the blue is the salt water heavy on the bottom. The light is the transparent water, which is at the top. When we tilt it, the heavier will try to come down more than the lighter one. It will push the lighter one this way. So the lighter one will have a velocity this way. Heavier one will have a velocity this way, which will create a gradient, velocity gradient. That will introduce instabilities and we are supposed to see the waves. Okay, this time. 
Which way? This way, Tintin, or that way? Okay, this is the best thing. Should I say Tintin? See the waves? I'll just stop. stop. Oh. Okay, it's mixed a bit, but still not totally mixed. I think it can work again. Yeah, yeah, just it. Yeah, it doesn't work. 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 Yeah, now you see something else. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's do again. Before it mixed, that one was gone. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Yeah, I 
Okay, okay. So, we can hear. Hello, everyone online. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. We can Okay, okay. So, this is a Schlerian setup. So, the idea here is to visualize the flow fields. So what are, you must have heard of various techniques for visualizing flow fields like PIV, right? Particle image velocimetry, and uh, oh, I, I, so. so basically, in the all in all these uh, in experiments, you need to visualize the flow fields, get the data for the velocity field, and uh, measure drag force and so on. So what happens here is this is a way to visualize the flow field that uses light here. So what I mean by that is so we have a so what we measure is Okay, so let me put it this way. So here to in Schrodinger setup uses the inherent property of the refractive index, which is that refractive index depends on the density of the medium. And the density of the medium in turn depends on the temperature. Imagine the, uh, the gas, ideal gas equation, P is equal to rho RT, rho by MRT. So uh, here, for example, if there is a temperature variation in my system, uh, right now there is no, I'll like, I'll put a candle and everything. So if there's a temperature variation in my system, 
then consequently my refractive index will change and the, so the light that comes light will bend around that so imagine initially light was passing through now if i heat the system the refractive index will change and light will start bending and we measure and the extent of that deflection is a, a measure of how hot is the system is or like roughly speaking just so so that is what we aim to measure using a schlerian setup so what we have here is this is the this is a led light source right uh, normal okay normal so uh, so the light passes the light goes uh, through that and here is a parabolic mirror the light gets reflected and it is finally captured in that camera so what we will do is we'll in, we'll add a system here so to begin with i'll just use hands and here uh, i want to add one thing like huh. basically you are just standing here right you don't know that there's a big set on top of each of our heads huh. because we are on that 19.4 and the resolution is so we are like captured so we draw the so all the line and so like he's going to just show that hmm. there is such a flow on his back and you can also keep your hand and see like yes. when the things are so there is a convection going on all of us are effectively captured things being cool and the energy yeah so yeah. i'll just so i'll put my hand he's actually switching switching of the ac so you know yeah Or in the camera, the image is. Mm -hmm. huh, so, so actually, uh, so what we do is we block most of the light using the blade. So that is the normal light path. Now, the moment we introduce any kind of heat, the light deflects. It goes across the blade, and that is what you see on the camera. That. <laughs> Hmm. So I'm putting the hand now. Can you see? Yeah, you can count one by one. So note that I have not rubbed my hands or anything. This is just the natural body temperature at work. It's not visible. Yes. Okay, you can take off the phone so that they can come on their own. Yes, yes. So actually, the moment we put candles, it, it looks very nice. But hand, you can able to see, right? So okay. Everybody seen it. Take it off. Take off okay. your hand instead. Now put it back. Okay. See, yeah. A bit up. Ah. Uh, it. Ah. Uh, oh. I'll remove it. Then yeah. maybe. Okay. And this is used to measure flows and uh, hmm. uh, measure temperature. So usually, like in hypersonic flows. there the uh, velocity gradients are so rapid mm -hmm. so there light is inertialess so we, they just use light to visualize the flow so approximate the temperature of stars also that is no temperature of no there they use i think infrared the other parts like so, i don't know yeah like the thing is that there's too much i mean everything is basically vacuum so hmm. i don't know how it works yeah. in the um, astronomy Huh? Okay. No. So actually, this uh, so uh, this uh, method involves the fact that it utilizes the fact that the refractive index of the medium is a function. Yeah. Can you see? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I thought I had an explanation. So I tried to explain. Okay. Candle lagao. Okay. Ah, candle lagao. मतलब क्या स्मोक लेकिन यार
You can't see any of that with the naked eye. So you are not seeing the flame, you are seeing the disturbance the flame yeah. causes. How the refractive index is or how hot the air is. So it actually visualizes temperature. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to the next one. Yeah. Yeah. smoke, smoke this no, no, I've seen it. Oh, I just say he was there. Okay. Okay, so this is a Schlerin setup here. And, uh, I, do, I, just, I don't know. Okay. Zoom is not required, I think. Okay, so for all the people online, like this is the so this this is the last experiment and it has done now. I'll just be repeating it to various batches. Hello, Susie. Can you hear me? You can put this on mute. Okay. Uh, no, no, there is feedback. Feedback on. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, okay, great. So uh, the experimental part is over now for the online people. So you can leave for the day and uh, do come back next week for the rest of the classes. So uh, the 
the experimental part is over now for the online thing. So see you all next week. Bye. Uh, do come back next week for the rest of the class. <laughs>